Yeah, so let me start by, uh, so this is about weighing schemes and NL versus UL problem. And it's joint work with Anand Dhail and Saurabh Sablani, both of them are here. And uh, so let me just get started by talking about the problem. The, the main problem of the talk would be reachability, which is uh, directed reachability. You're given a directed graph and two designated vertices S and T, and you want to check whether there is a directed path from S to T. Right? So uh, the undirected version of this is in log space. And uh, the directed version is NL complete. These are the, the, the well-known results. And uh, even for uh, layered DAGs, this is known to be NL complete. So for the, for the talk, I will uh, assume that so since we're going to talk about directed reachability, I'm going to assume that we're going to talk about layered DAGs. There are some cases where it's not required, but still it makes it cleaner. So by layering, I mean this is a, there is a, uh, there's a, uh, the vertices can be classified in such a way that, and, and there is a layer number associated with them in such a way that the edges go from one layer to the edges in the layer, next layer, okay? That's how the, so, so uh, one would ideally want to put this in log space so that, so, uh, so that we'll, we'll, we settle the NL versus L problem, but, uh, if you believe that NL is equal to L, and uh, then if one one natural thing to do is uh, is to identify some property of deterministic log space, which you can first prove, and uh, and it need not be having it need not be deterministic as such. So let me uh, let me tell you what the property is. For example, if you look at a deterministic computation, one can think about it has exactly one accepting path, right? And it also has the it also is true that it has only one path. But in addition, it's true that it has exactly one accepting path. So that exactly one accepting path can be separated out as a, so this is about unambiguous log space where yeah, this is, these are problems solvable by log space non-deterministic machines where they have at most one accepting path. So you can think of this as, you know, trying to uh, uh, restrict NL in such a way that, you know, on the way to log space. So clearly L, log space is included in NL, sorry, UL, and UL is contained in NL. And uh, the structural question that one would ideally want to ask first before uh, uh, before talking about NL versus L is can one can one uh, convert a space bounded non deterministic Turing machine make it unambiguous meaning that can I make sure that there is a the non deterministic Turing machine if it accepts has exactly one accepting path so if you think about the trivial algorithm for directed reachability it actually guesses the starts from S and guesses the next vertex and keeps going and uh, and accepts if it, if it reaches t. If you think about the number of accepting paths this, this may have, it actually could be equal to the, it is equal to the number of paths from s to t, which potentially can be exponential in a graph of n vertices. And hence, this is not obviously giving the UL algorithm. So one would want to do something better, right? <coughs> so can one make it unambiguous? Is, is it's in, in, in itself can be thought of as a way to, one, one stepping point to go to the log space. So let me talk about the second word in the title, or the first word in the title, which are weighing schemes. So these are uh, about graphs and ways of assigning numbers to edges in the graphs. Okay, so we are talking about positive numbers. So the weighing schemes are ways of uh, functions which maps uh, the edges to natural numbers. And uh, for the purpose of this talk, we'll talk about uh, these being polynomially bounded in terms of the number of vertices of the graph, and they will also be log space computable. So these are some, something that I'm going to assume about weighing schemes, which I'm not going to mention every time, but this is what it, it would be assumed. And the weight of a path, if you can, once you give assigned weights to edges, you can define the weight of a path to be the sum of the weights in the edges in it, right? And uh, <clears throat> so why do we talk about weighing schemes? So here is a, 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 a peculiar weighing scheme. So it's a way of assigning edge, weights to edges in such a way that there is a unique minimum weight path from S to every vertex. Okay, so this is not the very natural way of talking about, you, know, so you have an S and a T, and you would want to talk about weighing schemes where there is a unique minimum weight path from S to T, but this talks about there's a unique minimum weight path from S to every vertex in the graph. Okay, so this I want to stress on, and uh, let's call this as min, min unique weighing schemes. So we're going to talk about, we talked about graphs, directed reachability, and you talked about base weighing schemes with this peculiarity. And uh, why are we talking about this? Well, this because of this result. Testing reachability in a graph, which is augmented with a min unique weighing scheme, can be done in unambiguous log space. 
right? So somehow one can avoid the, the complication of producing exponentially many accepting paths if you have a weighing scheme which is min unique. At least there is something unique about the min unique weighing scheme. So maybe that one can, one, probably one can exploit it. This is a result by Allender and Reinhardt in 2000. And this talk will build on that. So this is the, that's what uh, the, the, it's going to be about, okay. So what is the implication? Well, so if you, if you, yeah. So the first implication is that to show that NL equal to UL, it suffices to come up with a min unique weighing scheme that's computable in log space that I said we'll assume a min unique weighing scheme uh, for any arbitrary graph. So you should be able to produce a min unique weighing scheme for any arbitrary graph. And then you can run Allender Reinhardt algorithm to show that NL equal to UL. We can do more with a polynomial size advice. <clears throat> we can produce a set of n square graphs preserving reachability. And with the guarantee that at least one of them is a min unique graph. So for example, if there is a, the, there is a way of uh, producing, so if I, have, if I have a G, from that with the help of an advice, we can produce a set of graphs such that one of them is guaranteed to be min unique. And the original ST reachability is true if and only if ST reachability is true in all of them, right? So this condition is true, this can be done. Again, Allender and Reinhardt actually does that after they design the UL algorithm. And the consequence of this is that once you have uh, a, a UL algorithm for testing reachability in min unique graphs, then you can run that on these graphs one by one, okay? And the Allender Reinhardt algorithm also has an extra feature that it will also tell you when it is encountered with a graph which is not min unique. So you'll, you can safely run it on all these n square graphs. And the first graph, if it happens to be no, not min unique, the algorithm will tell you. And the second graph, if it is, happens to be non min unique, it will tell you. And the third graph, if it happens to be min unique, the algorithm will tell you reachability, and et cetera. So the, it will run for, uh, so that, that's what this, this, uh, this particular setup will do. And this implies that under a polynomial advice, NL and UL are the same. So it, this construction is actually probabilistic. One can de-randomize it under an assumption under uh, the assumption one can show that this, this particular advice can even be computed, and then that shows that NL equal to UL, but that's about uh, a, a conditional result, right? So a natural question in this context is that uh, we wanted to design a weighing scheme. <coughs> yeah, so it's not, is this okay? Okay, so a natural question in this context is that can we design weighing schemes for uh, restricted graphs? For example, if we design weighing schemes for graphs, then we can show that NL is equal to UL. Can we show this for not for arbitrary graphs, but maybe a restricted class of graphs? It can indeed be done, and this can be done for planar grid graphs, which are uh, uh, which seems restricted to begin with, because they're, they're graphs which can be drawn on grids the, with the obvious alignment of edges. The edges go along the, uh, the edges of the grid. And this is done by Burkhe Tiwari and Vinod Chandran in 2007. And this shows that the, the reachability for this class of graphs is in UL. Well, they are not too restricted. The planar, it was known just one year ahead before that, that planar reachability problem, when the graph is actually a planar graph, is known to reduce to this grid graph reachability. And uh, hence, uh, this result itself shows that planar reach, the whole bigger class itself, is in UL. Okay? So the, 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 the first aim was, uh, uh, was to design it for arbitrary graphs, and it was actually implemented for a very restricted class of graphs, which is quite useful to produce, show that uh, the planar reachability is itself is in UL. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, no, it's not randomized. So this proof, this for this showing this, you need to just show that there exists an advice. What are the you think? Yeah, so this actually is a is a construction which which, which where you show that the probability it's a probabilistic method. Uh, basically, you will count. It's a counting argument, and you will so you can also say that there is a probability. I mean, there is a most of the strings will work, and you can actually get that string in hand if you have this. Okay, that's, yeah, that most is quantified. Right, so, so for the previous result, you just need to show that there exists one string, one advice string. We are, uh, yeah, well, uh, not that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll probably uh, skip that for the moment. Yeah, that, that's true. Okay. So the question is, is this tight? Is the, so we talked about min unique weighing schemes that uh, if you have log space computable min unique weighing schemes that implies NL equal to UL. 
you know, can we do away with, uh, by, re by relaxing this, maybe mean uniqueness by a bit, is the converse true? For example, if NL equal to UL, if you can compute mean unique schemes in log space for every graph, then that just means that we are not overdoing things, right? So we're just doing the right thing for and trying to design mean unique being schemes. It is indeed true, and uh, just that it's even more true by relaxing this to UL computable mean unique weighing schemes. And NL equal to UL is showing that equivalent is exactly equal to showing UL computable mean unique weighing schemes. This is the result due to Pavan, Tiwari, and Vinod Chandran. So that means that mean uniqueness seems to be just the right thing that we should, one should try to do. For example, to show that this, uh, so one could try to design mean unique weighing schemes. Well, that doesn't prevent us when, from asking, you know, can I still get away by relaxing this mean uniqueness to something better? For example, if what if I give you a weighing scheme which has, instead of producing a unique path, right, for, from S to every vertex, it produces, let's say, two paths from S to every vertex. Right? Can we still design UL algorithms? At least the allender reinhardt algorithm as such, well, it can, it can be adapted to this, but uh, as such, it, is, it doesn't generalize that way. But uh, uh, yeah, so, so one, one, the, that's a way one could ask about relaxation. And it also shows that you know, if you are able to relax whatever the complicated being scheme that you're going to come up with, it's ultimately going to be equivalent to designing a mean unique being scheme because of this characterization. Right? But still, yeah. <clears throat> so a weighing scheme that maps uh, edges to natural numbers is said to be min poly, so which, are, which is what we're going to, so instead of min unique, we'll talk about min poly. If there are at most n to the c for, for some c, which is known, right, minimum weight paths from s to every vertex in the graph, after you, if you look at this weighing scheme, okay, applied to the, the graph. So such a, this, as a, a scheme is such a way of assigning such uh, weights to edges for uh, uh, Various graphs. So, the natural questions when we are, when we have once we have this relaxation is about can min poly weighted reachability be done in UL? That's the first question. That was about relaxing the uniqueness to poly. Well, does this help in designing uh, weighing schemes, or does this help in showing NL equal to UL by designing weighing schemes for which are min poly instead of min unique, which presumably might be easier to design for? So we'll answer the first question. Second question, we don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah, so maybe, we, maybe we'll come back to that later. <clears throat> but it, at least this equivalence shows that if you're able to design a min uh, poly weighing scheme, then you also get a UL computable min unique weighing scheme because of the equivalence. So they're not too far apart anyway. But at the design phase, yes, it could be much easier to design for. That's potentially possible. right? OK, so this is the result one, the uh, relaxing min unique to min poly. So testing reachability in layer DAGs uh, uh, augmented with min poly weighing schemes is in UL. <clears throat> and I should uh, immediately put a comparison for people who are aware of the, uh, these classes. So there is a result called reach fuel equal to reach UL. So even if you don't get it, that's fine. But just that I want to make, point out that there's the, the result sounds similar, but there is a uh, uh, this result talks about graphs with you know, unique or polynomially many paths from S to every vertex rather than number of minimum weight paths. Okay? So the number of paths in our case could still be exponential, but the number of minimum weight paths is you bounded by a polynomial. So that's a com just a comparison, but never mind. Let me just go ahead. Okay? So, so this is about min unique and min unique to min poly. That's the relaxation. Well, this, uh, the, one could actually think about a complementary restriction where the, the weighing scheme is giving you a max uh, unique and max poly uh, 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 constraints. <coughs> right. So, so weighing scheme is said to be max unique if the maximum weight path from S to any vertex uh, is, uh, is unique, right? And under the weighing scheme. And you can also th think about max poly similarly. But let me talk about max unique. And this appear has appeared in literature in various contexts, especially related to longest path problem, which is that uh, you are given graph G, S, and T, and J. And is there a simple directed path from S to T in G of length at least J? Okay, so this is a longest path problem. And so that in general, this is an NP hard problem. But there are special cases one could solve in, in the various space bounded uh, classes. And uh, so here is one example where the max unique has come in. 
and max unique being if you have a graph with uh, in a dag with a unique source and it is augmented with a max unique weighing scheme then this can be done in ul so this is the result due to limai mahajan and nimporkar and this is in 2009 and what they use this for is, is actually to show that you know longest paths in planar graphs can be done in ul and essentially used the as a consequence of the earlier weighing scheme which is designed for planar graphs and planar grid graphs so this was the context in which max unique has appeared and uh, f so we wanted to do reachability and the first natural thing to try is uh, is to use this longest path algorithm and that's exactly what we do the first lemma is that the reach on layered dags uh, actually reduces the longest path in single source layered dags and in addition this preserves max unique and also max poly which i'll talk about soon Uh, both properties and the trivial reduction that between since longest path is a harder problem you would expect a reduction anyway from a reachability to longest path problem but that reduction doesn't really uh, produce a single source uh, constraint and this is what this reduction will essentially achieve so this as a consequence immediately by using their result we will get that maximum max unique weight weighted reachability is in ul well. okay and uh, so the next step is to relax it to max poly where you 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 are given the weighing scheme where the, the number of uh, s to any vertex number of paths from s to any vertex in the graph is bounded by a polynomial rather than being unique <coughs> testing reachability in uh, in layered dags with augmented with max poly can also be done in an ambiguous log space and finally the algorithm so our, because of our reduction we need to design the algorithm for we could design the algorithm for longest path problem which is what we do so we essentially generalize the lmn uh, limain bahajan nimporkar algorithm using the ideas from the min poly part and uh, give an algorithm for longest path problem even for max poly weighing scheme so that the, along with the reduction we are solving the reachability okay so that's uh, that's about the set of results now let me just uh, uh, you know uh, collect together the consequences so we know that these two are equal and nl is equal to ul is equal into saying that polynomially bounded ul computable min unique weighing scheme exists for any layered dags and this is the result uh, by pavari pavan tiwari and vinod chandran and what we have added is a few more equivalences which which which, which was about relaxing these schemes to be even polynomially bounded the number of uh, S, s to any vertex paths with minimum weight being polynomially bounded or maximum weight being polynomially bounded so that's that's the consequence as such <coughs> so yeah this is a good point if there are to take if there are questions actually so i would if there are questions please otherwise i'll just continue with the so now i'm just going to do uh, part of the proofs and then then okay so in the rest of the talk we will we will outline alander reinhardt algorithm and then what is the modification that we will require for it to go through for minimum min poly case it's it's very natural given that that algorithm and uh, uh, so then this will not actually give you an unambiguous algorithm at, as we will see it will kind of a give a special nl algorithm where you have the following property that you know so if you if you look at the conf the set of configurations of the nl machine so from the uh, start configuration there are these spe special accept configurations each of them has the property that there is exactly one accepting path if it exists each of them separately have this unique property but together there is no one accepting path accepting configuration which has a unique accepting path to it right so that's a, so that's a special nl algorithm and then we'll take that and do something for making it unambiguous and uh, the, the the that proof i'm i'm hoping to show you and i'm going to show you the reduction hopefully from reach to long path if the if we get to that in the time right and not going to talk about max poly case at all yeah so that that's slightly more complicated than the min poly case and it will take more time okay so let me just set up the the basic uh, so we have this graph with uh, layered graph with uh, the weighing scheme given to us and it satisfies the min unique or min poly so let's start with min unique because we are going to do alander reinhardt uh, to begin with and uh, replace the weights with paths corresponding to the same length the the corresponding to the weight okay so because they are polynomially bounded we will not be blowing up the graph and uh, 
after we do this there are no no more weights and uh, you can uh, still since we started with a layered graph to begin with we have this property that you know every edge goes from a lower layer lower numbered layer to a higher numbered layer they may not go to adjacent layers but since we still have that property but one important uh, property is that so every so we started with a layered graph where every edge went from one layer to the other and now we are applying this weighing schemes so now we have the property that every edge will go either to the so from a lower numbered vertex to a higher numbered vertex that's what the the after application it may not be adjacent layers now because of this application of the layering <coughs> And uh, the peculiarity after this is that uh, if you look at any path, if you look at any path in the in the whole graph, then that can be uniquely described by the set of vertices. You don't need to actually sequence the vertices. If I just give you the set of vertices, there's actually a odd, specific order in which they, are, can, they can be connected because they just go from a lower numbered vertex to a higher numbered vertex. Right? Okay, so that's a, uh, uh, that's a peculiarity. And then now we can actually forget about the layering and we can imagine that uh, we have a graph where the paths are described by subsets rather than sequences. Okay, that's what we will talk about. Now, <clears throat> so we have the property that for every vertex, the, the S to that vertex, the num number of shortest paths is unique, and we somehow need to use that for designing our UL algorithm. That's what Alander Reinhardt is going to do. So, so let us uh, keep track of the, the distance of uh, the shortest paths to a vertex, let's call it dv. And uh, if we had some way of talking about whether d of t is less than or equal to n, right? that, is, that would answer our question about reachability, whether distance of the final vertex is less at most n. Uh, so, but unfortunately, we can't do that because there's no way of you know, verifying whether the, 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 the paths that we are talking about. So one way to talk about this is, um, I have this vertex t is the shortest path of length at most n. Right? Well, if we try to guess the path, if, if you get the path, well, you're good. But the problem is that you may not be guessing the, sh the shortest path, and hence there may be too many of them. So your algorithm will not be unambiguous. But then you need to actually somehow guess the, the minimum weight path, or the shortest path. Let me talk, not talk about weights. The shortest path, and that somehow has to be enforced. And this, uh, the technique to enforce is actually in, to start from the S and then go up in an inductive fashion. And this is a uh, this is uh, a modification, or or I guess motivated by the original uh, inductive counting algor algorithm for uh, showing that NL is closed under complementation. So here are the two inductive parameters that one keeps. CK is the number of vertices within level K. So level is, uh, so you can think of levels being defined based on the sh shortest distance now, right? So forget about the previous layering because that might confuse. So we are talking about uh, layers based on the shortest distance to vertices. So CK is the number of vertices in level K and sigma K is the number of distances, so the sum of the distances of, uh, of the vertices within level K. So level K, okay, it's not exactly in the level K, but any and uh, with that with level number at most k, okay, within level k. So the idea is to do an inductive uh, computation. You know, design a UL algorithm for dv less than or equal to k, and uh, assuming that these counts are available for the kth level, and then use that routine to compute the the next level of the counts. But these have to be unambiguous, and that's what the the main essence of the idea is. So I'll I'll just describe this. Because once we describe this, the, the, our, our first idea would be all, almost there from there. Right? <clears throat> so assume that, so we're going to talk about, okay, let me just go back one slide. So we're going to compute CK, Sigma K from CK plus, so CK plus one, Sigma K plus one from CK and Sigma K, and then continue like this. And in the, in the final, once the final computation arrives, you will be able to answer DT less than or equal to N or not, those questions like that, okay? And then that will be the ST reachability that you would want to answer. Okay, so assume, so let's uh, design uh, dv less than or equal to k routine. So values of ck and sigma k are known, meaning that if you, this is the layer k, the layer k based on the dv values, the shortest distance values, and you know the number of vertices within this, and you know the, their sum of distances, short distances and so on. So both, this, both are available to you correctly for the layer k. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, you would want to check whether a given vertex is in, in layer K, you would actually want to go through all the vertices in layer K and check if V is one of them. 
But then when you do that, you don't want to miss any of the vertices, right? And you don't want to miss any of the vertices that you will see here. So you, you would go through each vertex in the graph and non-deterministically guess whether the distance of that graph, the, that vertex in the, in the graph is, is less than or equal to k from s. <clears throat> and if the guess is no, which means that you have guessed that the vertex is outside, then you skip that vertex because you don't want to count, you don't want to, you, you, that is not going to be useful for checking dv is less than or equal to k anyway, it's not going to be. But if you, if you guess yes, then you actually want to ask the algorithm to guess the, the path also because this is potentially V itself and if this is V then you immediately are going to declare that oh, I found V. But if, uh, the, so if, if you guess this vertex, you're going to also ask the algorithm to guess the path and that path is actually the shortest, uh, the, uh, the shortest path, right? Because uh, that's what you're going to ask. To. So guess an integer from one to K. <coughs> And, uh, uh, and a path from s to x of path uh, of length at most l. And if such a path is found, then you know that uh, you know, the x is, is uh, so then, and if you can somehow ensure that the path you guessed is actually the shortest, then you know that x is within this layer and that's potentially one of the vertices here. And you can check whether it's actually equal to v. If it is not, then try the next x. And in this process, you want to make sure two things. One, you don't miss any x. And two, you don't, uh, you know, by mistake, include an x uh, uh, the, by guessing a longer path for it, okay? <clears throat> so we converted the weights to act by paths, and then now we are talking about a graph which has only paths, so there are no numbers now. Correct, correct, yeah. Oh, well, no, in the, well, polynomial size. So, yeah, so polynomial size, yeah. So unary, it's, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Okay, so uh, so the thing is that if you if you if you guess an x to be within within the layer, and uh, you try to guess the shortest path, and if you guess something longer, at any point we don't want the algorithm to continue because there is no guarantee that the 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 way number of ways of guessing the path to x if you're not guessing the shortest path, there's no guarantee of uniqueness. So you want to make sure that the algorithm actually ends up in guessing one unique path, in no matter which non-deterministic path you're going to look at x you should be guessing one unique path. You have the guarantee that S to X, there is only one shortest path. So you better make the algorithm, force the algorithm to guess the shortest path. So the way to, to make that is using this, the, the sigma K that we have, is to make sure that you, uh, suppose the algorithm actually guesses something more than what, uh, what was the shortest. Then finally, we're going to check whether the sum of the vertices that you have seen of all the distances that we have seen so far is equal to sigma k and whether we have missed any vertex, both checks are going to be done. Once they do this, <coughs> that means that if, you, if the algorithm at some point actually missed guessing the shortest path for a vertex, then in order to match the sum, it has to guess, it has to compensate that by guessing for another vertex, a path which is actually shorter than its shortest. But then it will be caught there when it's asked to produce the path because there cannot be a path which is shorter than the shortest for another vertex, right? So that is, the, that is where this algorithm will catch paths which are not actually trying to guess the minimum weight one, okay? Right, so when, then you'll re return yes if V was guessed within level K. Okay, that's what you will do. <coughs> so then you will, uh, so you, the, the inductive computation is what is remaining. So you have a routine which can check whether a vertex V is within the level K or not. So you will essentially uh, uh, observe the following, that uh, you, know, for you start with CK and Sigma K as equal to CK plus one and Sigma K plus, plus as equal to the set of vertices here. Then you want to find out who are the new guys I'm, I want to add. And to find the new guys, well, one vertex I want to add if there is a neighbor here, uh, such that there is a direct edge from the neighbor to the, that vertex, basically. Uh, first check whether this V is within or not. If it is not, then check whether there is an X within this layer K such that X to V is an edge and DX is less than or equal to K. And <coughs> if everything uh, checks out as the, the you know, they are, uh, if, if, if V is not connected to any vertex within the level K, then move to the next V and, 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 uh, <coughs> and, and try, the, try to uh, find out what are the vertices that you want to include in the next layer. In, as, uh, in the CK plus one, sigma K plus one count. <clears throat> and in, the, in between, you can also figure out, this is Allender, Reinhardt, uh, 
the, uh, the, the something that I mentioned earlier, you can also find out whether it's not mean unique. So for example, if there is a vertex, you can actually guess, ch check whether there is another x prime here, which also is connected to b. And you have a routine to check whether x prime is within this. And you will run over all possible x primes and try whether that, that actually is failing to be mean unique because of that. And if it is uh, satisfying, then you would increment. You have included v in your list, and you have incremented uh, the sum of paths and the number of vertices that you have seen. Each of them, this increment will ensure that if you have missed any, then the, the <coughs> so OK, so in the previous, uh, yeah, so in this case, we are, we are computing CK plus 1 and sigma K plus 1 from CK and sigma K. OK, so that's about mean unique. And I've just told you about uh, Allender Reinhardt algorithm. <coughs> Now, to, so where does it go wrong when you have more than one path, right, from a vertex? So let me go back to that slide. So it, it, the one critical point is this, where you're trying to guess an integer for the, the length of the path and s to uh, x path of length l. So if there are more than one path here, then your algorithm has multiple options. So different non-deterministic paths will guess different paths. And uh, that will create a problem, because that will make it unambiguous. Because different paths, different non-deterministic paths will, will go through different guesses. And they will all probably can, potentially can end up in accept, and that will be a problem. So we, uh, intuitively, we would want uh, to actually keep track of how many paths we see, you know, make sure that we enumerate all the paths in the same path, same, same non-deterministic computation, in such a way that we account for all of them. Right? So that's what, essentially, we're going to do. Uh, and we, yeah, so it will be clear in the next picture. So I'll just, uh, <clears throat> so we keep track of this additional count. So it's going to be a triple inductive counting rather than a double inductive counting. So PV is the number of S to be shortest paths. So if you go to the, that picture, is S to X is the, 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 the number of paths that you are keeping track of by this parameter. And PK is the sum of PVs the number of shortest paths for all vertices within level k. So this is, uh, again, for the same reason of not missing out on guessing the, any of the paths to x. But that will be clear in the next picture. So let me go back to the, the picture. But we are talking about min poly case now. And uh, the algorithm is similar. The first uh, routine is to check whether dv is less than or equal to k. For each x and v, we want to, okay, so we want to actually estimate what's the number of uh, so the, we want to actually estimate, if, 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 check if V is within this region. We have uh, CK, Sigma K, and PK known to us. We want to check, uh, not trusting on their uh, correctness, we want to check whether V is within this. So uh, like previous case, we will actually go through different X's potentially within this region and check if V is one of them. And for different X's, we'll, it's, we'll check whether it's less than or equal to K, meaning that we are checking whether it's in this region or not. And if the answer is no, then we are going to smooth, skip it. But then again, the way the algorithm is going to catch a correct x to be guessed outside is that if you miss an x, then uh, your count of the number of vertices here is going, not going to match finally. So you'll end up rejecting. Right? If you, the, the count of the number of vertices within this region is not matching with your ck, then you're going to reject. So this, uh, this, this is, uh, now if the answer is, so if you guess the path to be inside, then we have this trouble that we said earlier, that there are potentially many paths that are possible from S to X, polynomially many. And uh, we actually want to keep track of it. We don't want it to leave it to the non-deterministic computation to guess which path you should, you should go on. We would want to go over all of them in the same path. And there are only polynomially many of them, so that, that would still po be possible, but in a unique fixed order. I mean, there should be a canonical order that one can define among these paths such that the, the non-deterministic computation can guess them in that order, right? And uh, this is what, uh, so essentially the idea would be to associate for each path uh, a number, basically a hash, right? Such that uh, no two paths get collided with respect to the hashing, right? That's what the natural thing to try there is. <coughs> so, and with respect to the hash, I'll show you the hash, uh, the ha hashing soon. But essentially, the idea was we want to actually associate the paths to some numbers. And we want to guess these, make one non-deterministic computation, which is claiming that x is within this. Guess the value of p, which is the number of paths. And guess that many paths in the increasing order of these hashed values, such that there is a unique way of guessing them 
for the non-deterministic computation. If you guess your value of p to be wrong, we are keeping track of the total number, of total sum of p's that we have seen so far. Hence, your final count will not match pk, and that's where we'll catch. And if you guess x to be outside, that's another, uh, there is a value of ck will catch you because that will not match. And if you guess the length of s to x path to be wrong, meaning so to be, to be uh, not equal to the actual value of the length, then the sigma k count will catch you because you have to compensate that by guessing a shorter path for a, for a vertex whose shortest path is larger. So that, is, that would lead, lead to a reject, reject anyway. <coughs> So in, in this case, we, like, we are keeping track of, so we, we will guess these paths in order, and we'll keep the count and the sum and the paths, the number of paths that you have seen totally in this region, right? And we'll finally check whether the count that we got after we try out this, count that we got is CK and sum is sigma K and paths is PK. So these two are where Allender from Allender Reinhardt, and this is the extra condition that we have added just to make sure that these paths are not missed out. No path is missed out in the... Uh, <clears throat> in the actual guessing, right? <clears throat> and we can also, at the end of this algorithm, we also have the value of the number of vertices, number of paths to V, because that's what we guessed here, right? For the V, if, if any of these x's is actually our V, then we not only have, you know, stated that dV is less than or equal to k, we even know the number of paths to that vertex. We can even return that. That's going to be used in the next one. <clears throat> So now what I need to tell you now is that what is this hashing and what is the, the order in which, how does it determine the order? Well, that's pretty simple. So uh, <clears throat> and that's where we use the fact that you can represent the path by a set of vertices rather than a sequence. And uh, so we first encode. So if you look at the, the, if you look at a path, you can actually think of it as a string, which is a, the characteristic string. And uh, the set of vertices can be encoded by this binary encoding, which is the two power, the sum of the powers of two. This number actually hashes this, uh, this number actually represents this path, and it represents which vertices take part in the path, and hence the path is defined uniquely. Now, uh, but this number is too large to, uh, to store because it's exponential. It could actually be n vertices. <clears throat> so, yeah, phi, phi, p, phi p is actually unique for every path. That's good for us, but unfortunately, it's too large. So we need some, some, uh, some hash, some uh, number m says that phi p modulo m can be stored and that m should not be too large. And still, it remains unique within that. So there's the, this is the natural uh, setting in which hashing could be applied. So the famous FKS hashing is what we would use. So there is a, there is a number m, which is polynomially bounded. Which, if, you, if the set that you're interested in hashing, what is the set in this context? For every word, any vertex, the number of S2V paths, the set of S2V paths, that's the set that we're talking about. And that set will be hashed without collision. And there's a number, this uh, n to the C prime, the, there's a number m, which is n to the C prime, represented in this many number, this many bits, a C prime log n bits, we can, <coughs> which we can use in order to hash the paths, the weights of the paths to a single vertex. Right? So for every vertex, there will not be a collision among them. So uh, now, this for every, if you look, think about one vertex, this naturally defines an ordering among the incoming paths to that vertex. So when we want to guess the paths, we would want the algorithm to guess the path in strictly increasing order of this hash. Okay? And, then, uh, and if it is not able to do that, then we are going to reject in this path, in that path. Okay? So, if there are, if there are, so just to go back to the previous slide, so we are going to guess the, what is the number of paths, and we are going to guess the num the, the, those p paths, right? And those p paths are going to be guessed in order, in order in terms of the phi p values. And if that, if you are not able to do that, then the algorithm rejects in that path. But then, uh, if, the, if there is a, if there are polynomially many different paths anyway from s to x, if there are so many paths anyway from s to x, then there is a path which will do the correct guessing in the correct order. Okay. So that is about uh, taking that, uh, that. So this idea is also used recently in the other paper where uh, I mentioned earlier, where they talk about the number of paths rather than the number of min weight paths. But that is also useful in our context. But they use a slightly different encoding. But the, the, the idea is also used there, actually. And we got motivated by looking at their paper, actually. So to compute, 
So this time I will probably quickly skip uh, the, the, to compute CK plus one, sigma K plus one, and PK plus one for, you need to figure out which are the V's that you need to include in the kth layer for which we need to actually identify what are the potential excess from the, from the, within the layer K side. And that's similar to the previous one, just that the only difference is that now we can actually even check whether it's min poly by looking at you know, how many vertices are there in this, which are directly connected to this. If there are more than uh, uh, the polynomial n to the c that is given to us, then you can immediately declare that the graph doesn't satisfy that min poly criterion, which it claimed to satisfy. So this is an additional feature which Alan Reinhardt algorithm also had, and the same thing can be extended here. Just that the additional idea is just the hashing, that's it. <coughs> So that's, that's about the peculiar NL algorithm, and I'll quickly go through the, so what is this, so, so I, I claim that there is an NL algorithm which actually starts from the start configuration. There are these configurations which have by themselves unique accept, uh, accepting paths to them, right? So the accept paths, so these configurations we label with the M that we used. Remember, so we said that there is a hashing, that hash value that you can use in the range one to N to the C prime, which will work correctly, but there may be many M's. For each of the M's, this hash will, uh, will, will work correctly for the, for the path. So each of them will, le if you label the accepting, accepting configuration with the particular M that you use, for each of the M's, since the M is hashing correctly all the paths, the number of paths from this start configuration to this accept configuration will be unique. But it doesn't mean that there is another, so it all, there could be another M which is also correct, which is also good for the hashing, in such a way that it produces another accepting path in the computation. So there are, so each of these uh, configurations, when we label them with M, they have unique accept, accepting path to them, but by, by the whole, it doesn't give you a UL algorithm because there are so many accepting paths anyway. There's no single accepting configuration with a unique accepting path. <coughs> and uh, so uh, that requires an argument, maybe I'll just quickly skip it, so because that's the, in, in the interest of time. Um, so this also, this, this particular special NL is also called few UL. I, I did not introduce the class, but that's what the, the, the literature terms it as. <coughs> so the one point I want to say is that if, if suppose the M that you try out you know, uh, the, for, for the uh, hashing, okay, I didn't mention that we're going to guess the M, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to guess the M and then try to compute with respect to that M. And it's because of that, that for different M's you will end up uh, having accepting paths if they are correct. There may also be M's which are not correct. We want to argue that for them, the algorithm will not produce an accepting path because if M is not correct, meaning M is not a good hash, what will happen is that, uh, so if you look, look at the M is, if, if M is not good, what will happen? Okay, so I'll go back, sorry. If M is not good, what will happen is when you try to guess for, for there, there must be a vertex for which M is not good, right? So that vertex, if you, when you try to uh, guess the paths to that vertex, <coughs> although there are P act, the distinct paths in the graph, because M is not good, two of the paths gets hashed to the same value. So one will not be able to produce so many P, distinct P paths in the strictly increasing order. Although there are so many paths, some of the hashes get collided because M was not good. And it will be, so the algorithm will not be able to produce those many distinct paths. And hence, the algorithm will detect that, okay, you guessed the P to be the number of paths, but they didn't, you didn't guess that many paths in the increasing order, hence you're rejecting, right? So the, path, the, so the, the value of M, if it is not good, it will be detected at this particular case where, at this particular situation, when the number of paths is guessed. The, the, so many paths are guessed in the increasing order. Okay, so, so what do we do to make the algorithm unambiguous? So far it is not unambiguous. Like I said, there are so many accepting configurations and with, although they are with unique accepting path. <coughs> so the idea is to guess the least among, among them and work with it. Then you have to actually show that that's actually the least. Right? That's, that's one constraint that's going to be there. So if you call the guessed value as F prime and the actual value of M, actual, actual least value to be F, well, how do you check whether it's the least? Well, you will use the F prime that you guessed as your, the mod value for your algorithm, but you will also check whether, you will also run the algorithm for M prime, which is less than the guessed value, and make sure that, try to ensure that this is actually the, the least. 
but then you also make sure that the algorithm finds the badness of M prime in a unique computational path. So this uh, needs an argument. Um, <clears throat> okay, so so let me just tell you the, the the story by a picture. I didn't draw a picture for that. Uh, maybe I'll draw it here. <clears throat> so you have you have f and you have the f prime that you guessed. Ideally, we would want this f prime to be equal to f. Okay, if it is equal to uh, uh, okay, so suppose it is less. So what we are going to do is that whatever the f prime that you are going to guess, we want to verify whether that's the least. We are going to run all over all m prime, all m's which are which are below this, and make sure that they are all bad because this is the this is supposed to be the least good one right and for uh, so let me assume that that can be done but then the question is once you run it for f prime since f is actually the actual least one least good one f prime is guaranteed to be bad but if if f prime is bad then the algorithm will catch it because there will be a vertex on which the hashing is not correct and hence the guess guessing will fail there for the different paths but so this case will not arise so i'll just when f prime is here Okay, so this is the, the actual f is here, the least f is here, and f prime is here, and then you are going to verify whether all the smallest m's are actually bad, but then you're going to get hit on f, and you're going to catch the algorithm there, right? Now I need to tell you how do you verify whether, you know, the, from uh, from the smallest m, how do you verify whether an m is bad or not, right? So we want to make sure that this is the guest one is the smallest. So how do you verify whether the m is uh, so if m is bad, if a, if a, if a particular uh, hash is bad, then there is a layer number in which the least layer number in which it is bad, in which there is a vertex which is bad for this particular m. So you will try to guess that layer number, and then in that layer number, there is, a, there is an ordering among vertices. We will make sure that the ordering uh, eliminates ambiguity of non-determinism. We try one by one, and then try to produce the two paths to this particular vertex where m actually acts badly. So that, that can be implemented. So I, I put in some details, but then I'll skip because of the, the, the time constraint. So this, this essentially this idea can be implemented. This is the making the algorithm uh, unambiguous. Uh, as a, the, so given, given, given an m, how do you check whether it's actually the, a bad m for the, for the, uh, for the hashing? Okay. I think I'll, I will not do the reduction at all. So that's just done by a picture. I'll quickly wrap up. Of course, the, it's the, the, the question is to design min poly weighing scheme for uh, uh, arbitrary directed graphs. <clears throat> when it's not clear whether, you know, easier to, in terms of design, whether it is, uh, but like I showed earlier, you know, uh, the, if you have a min poly weighing scheme, then that, that immediately implies that there is a UL computable min unique weighing scheme, although it doesn't imply a log space computable min unique weighing scheme. But there, there is some equivalence between them, but it could be easier to do. And can we apply any of the uh, above for restricted graph classes? Well, like we said earlier, the min unique was implemented for grid graphs and other restricted graphs. And uh, Vinod Chandran, uh, so Burke, Vitavari, and Vinod Chandran, they show that this you can extend their scheme for something called monotone 3D grid graphs, where the 3D grid graph is a three-dimensional grid with uh, some subset of edges, then NL equal to UL. Well, even for this, if we can ask, when one, can one design, can one, can one use this leeway of min poly to design uh, um, a min poly weighing scheme for this particular uh, class of graphs? And this also probably leads to uh, ask for a structural study. We have min poly, max poly. So is there any structural reason, is there any structural connection between these uh, weighing schemes? as uh, abstract objects. Um, I mean, it's not even clear whether one can shift the weighing scheme from min unique or min poly or max poly. Can one shift it to any other uh, number in the range? So that's not at all clear from the context. But these are these were tailor-made for max and min. Yeah, I'll stop with that. Sorry I took.